Hello everyone, my name is Sam Helsian, and welcome to my video where I attempt to explain uh, the ending of Outer Wilds. Uh, if, like me, you played through the game and you thoroughly enjoyed it, and you got to the end and you felt like there was still a lot left unanswered, um, don't worry, you're not alone. Um, <laughs> The, the ending of Outer Wilds, I think, is kind of intentionally open-ended. They sort of leave you to kind of fill in a lot of the blanks. Um, so in this video, I'm going to attempt to just um, give you my perspective um, of what I think uh, happened um, in the end. But before we go any further, um, fair warning, uh, there are obviously a ton of spoilers in this video. So if you haven't played this game yet, hit stop immediately, go out and buy this game and play it. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, otherwise, there is a link in the description down below to a playthrough um, that I did recently. I'm a little late to the party, but I am very glad I finally got around to playing this game because it is well worth it. Right, without further ado, let's uh, get on with it. So, the game draws a lot on astrophysics and quantum physics. And these two sciences don't really play well together. Astrophysics works in its own enclosed system, and quantum physics works in its own enclosed system, but when you try and mix the two together, uh, they just don't correspond and they don't add up and things just go a little haywire. This game kind of imagines a world where the two do play nice together, where they do work together, where you've got um, physical matter and large uh, astral bodies behaving in a very similar fashion to, to atoms and molecules and how they behave at the quantum level. So essentially, uh, I, I don't profess to be an expert in either of these two fields. I just watch a lot of Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, and I highly recommend you watch the episode um, that I've listed in the description down below. It does cover um, a lot of the, the, the concepts and the topics that this game plays around with. So what little I do know about quantum mechanics. I know that um, electrons, which are the negatively charged subatomic particles that orbit the nucleus of um, an atom, are said to exist in all possible orbits around the nucleus until it is measured or observed. So as soon as the measurement is taken, the electron then snaps into one of these possible orbits around the nucleus. Um, some people believe it pops in and out of existence. Other people believe that it's just this physical act of measuring where the electron is that forces it into a particular orbit. There's a very famous saying, which I'm sure you've all heard, which is, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? Now, this comes from um, a theory or a metaphor that arose out of this kind of concept, which was um, if you have a tree behind you and you're not looking at it, it exists in all possible positions until you turn around and look at it, at which point your physical act of observing the tree forces it to snap into existence and forces it to snap into that particular position where you are seeing it. Um, it's, it's taking a little bit of license, it's taking a little bit of liberty with the concept, but that is definitely what uh, Mobius Digital is um, drawing on very, very heavily in this game. You can see it um, with the fact that, you know, your shuttle is made of wood, there's pine trees everywhere, there's trees on the moon. Um, trees feature incredibly heavily throughout this game and it's very very much um, drawing on that metaphor or that uh, concept or example. So you're probably wondering like what the hell has this got to do with anything and what has it got to do with the ending of Outer Wilds? Um, well it's just laying the the foundation or the groundwork for for the next concept 
that the game plays around with quite a bit, which is a multiverse. So the idea that we are just living in one instance of an infinite amount of possible universes. And where this thinking comes from is theorizing what, was, what it was like before the Big Bang when everything in existence was compressed down to a tiny little point and all matter, everything we know, all, all the rules of science and, and physics were all compressed down to a tiny point. In the interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he says that in that instance, um, although physics and quantum physics don't play nicely together, in that scenario, quantum physics would most likely win. Quantum physics would most likely win out in that battle. And in that instance, matter and, and physics would then behave in a quantum manner. So you would have atoms popping in and out of existence, um, which would mean that entire universes could be popping in and out of existence constantly within this singularity. And when the Big Bang happened, our universe was just one of these possibilities. So the third concept that Art Wilds uh, plays around with is um, something called tachyons. And this is just a theorized particle um, that moves uh, backwards in time. So according to Einstein's um, theory of relativity, uh, matter cannot reach uh, the speed of light. The closer you get to reaching the speed of light, the, the slower time moves for you. So if you were to jump in a shuttle and, and go so fast that you were approaching the speed of light, someone on the outside looking in would see you moving in sort of extreme slow motion. And when your shuttle came to a halt, um, you would then effectively be in the future. Uh, time would have slowed down for you, your aging process would have slowed down, um, but the rest of the world would have carried on without you. Everyone you know would be dead and you would be basically in the future. So with tachyons, they kind of theorize, well, what would actually happen if a particle could go faster than the speed of light? And the theory says that um, it would then start actually moving backwards in time. And uh, it's impossible to, to do this experiment. It's impossible to measure it because, I mean, how do you measure a particle that's whizzing past you in the opposite direction in, in terms of time? But this is definitely what um, Mobius Digital is drawing on quite heavily with the warp technology. So when you step into the black hole, you arrive, all your particles in your body kind of travel so quickly um, that they turn into tachyons and actually start going backwards in time. So the reason you're arriving before you left is because you're actually time traveling, you're going backwards in time. Um, and that's how the Nomai mask technology works. So this brings us to the eye of the universe. Uh, what is it? Um, the Namai kind of believed it was a sentient uh, being that was calling out to them and had chosen them as a species uh, to witness something or to learn some kind of forbidden knowledge. But in the end, through just sheer random luck and circumstance, the Namai are kind of wiped out and it turns out that it's actually just an unassuming, unwitting Herthian who in fact eventually gets to meet and to experience um, the, the eye of the universe. Uh, we also know that uh, through a couple of data logs from Selenum that Selenum had her doubts about the eye being sentient. Um, she kind of believed that the universe simply is and, and we are, meaning that there is no deeper meaning, there's no kind of religious meaning behind it. So she was pretty convinced that the, the eye of the universe was in fact uh, just a force of nature. And in my personal opinion, so this is just my conjecture, Going through all of this science and, and all of this actual factual, or not factual, but theoretical knowledge that, that Mobius is drawing on, I am pretty certain that that was what they were kind of going for. They, they do v leave it very, very open-ended. They kind of leave it up to you to decide 
and and kind of take whatever meaning from it that that you want but if if i was a betting man um i would say that 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 was the actual intended um sort of function of the eye of the universe so if the eye of the universe wasn't sentient and it wasn't calling out to the Namai and it wasn't calling out to us as a Herthian, what then is it? What what is its function? What what does it do? Well if we look at the bizarre events um leading up to the final ending, um we can start to kind of piece together what I think uh, Mobius was, was going for. If we look back at our encounter with Selenum on the quantum moon, she told us that the quantum moon is in fact the eye of the universe's moon, and it exhibits quantum phenomenon because of its proximity to the eye of the universe. So basically anything that's close to or comes into contact with the eye of the universe becomes quantumly entangled they become uncertain as the game kind of describes it and the only way to um, to get rid of that uncertainty is through an observer so a conscious observer essentially snaps a quantum object back into existence at least in the confines of this game and Selenum was wondering what would happen if a conscious observer who has the power almost of creation in a sense, were to enter the eye of the universe and become quantumly entangled themselves. So keeping this in mind, as we jump into the vortex and fall through what appears to be some kind of a wormhole and make our way past the, the odd uh, columns of kind of gray matter with lightning everywhere, Eventually, we end up back at the observatory, um, back on Timberhearth. But things are a little odd. Things are a little strange. I think what's basically going on here is Mobius is just kind of hammering home or reminding us um, that we are an observer in this realm of kind of quantum uncertainty. Uh, we're in an observatory um, we are walking past, observing all of the various uh, displays um, in the museum. They're just kind of reiterating uh, this concept for us. We then make our way upstairs where we are presented with what appears to be a miniature universe and are prompted to simply observe. When we interact with this miniature universe, it zooms out and shows us essentially the, the heat death of our universe. Our universe, as we know, is coming to an end. All the stars are coming to the end of their natural life cycles and going supernova. Um, and we are witnessing the end of the universe, essentially. After witnessing the death of our universe, um, we start to see hundreds of tiny points of light getting brighter and brighter. And as we get closer, we begin to realize that each one of these points of light is an entire universe unto itself. And essentially what we're being shown here is a multiverse with an infinite amount of possible new universes. We then find ourselves wandering about a seemingly endless dark forest, which we later found out is called the Ancient Glade. Um, and this is basically a metaphorical representation of the eye of the universe, uh, an entity or phenomenon that has always existed since before time, and where time itself has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Later, we come across a reflection of ourselves, or uh, a mirror image, if you will. Uh, this is the game's way of showing us that we have become quantumly entangled. We are both an observer as well as a quantumly entangled entity. The reflection of ourselves then turns into a tree, which seems to progressively age backwards 
um, and this is possibly um, just showing us that this is renewal, this is the beginning of something new, this is the reversal of time back to the beginning. Um, I'm not quite sure to be honest. Um, after that we see a campfire um, and we begin the process of gathering all of the various characters together that we've met throughout our journey um, through Outer Wilds. The significance of this, I think, is basically just to say our final goodbyes. Um, it's, it's essentially like uh, if you go and watch a stage production at the end, all the characters will come out and take a bow. Um, so I think that's all that's going on here. Um, once everyone has been gathered round, we go to each one of them one by one and ask them to start or to begin ending off with Selenum, who begins to create a sort of a ball of energy in the middle. On the sides of this ball of energy, we see all kinds of icons and symbols kind of flashing. And essentially what this is representing is just a metaphorical creation of a new universe. All the creatures, all the plants, all the minerals, all the animals, like everything. Uh, that goes into planets and stars and, and universes is all kind of being uh, brought together and simply through the act of observing we are breathing life into all of these various elements. Finally we end off with a massive explosion um, which is essentially a new Big Bang signifying the start of an entire new universe. So once the end credits have finished rolling, a title pops up on screen which reads 14.3 billion years later and as the camera slowly pans across we see that uh, there is a group of sentient crickets gathered around a campfire so so we know they're sentient because they at least have mastered the uh, the art of fire so it's a bit of a bit of a tongue-in-cheek joke right at the end but what it does tell us is that uh, a new universe has in fact been created and that brings us to our conclusion. The Namai believed that the Eye of the Universe was sentient and that was calling out to them. This is still on the table. I mean, it's, it's highly possible. It could just very well be that, um, you know, unfortunate circumstances led to the Namai being wiped out and just through dumb luck, the, uh, the Herthian, which is our character, um, ended up being the one uh, to meet the eye of the universe but what we do know is that the eye needs a sentient observer in order to create life um, and this must mean that it is some kind of a singularity similar to um, what must have existed um, in the early universe um, just before the big bang so that's my interpretation of the final act of outer wilds um, I hope you liked this video guys. I hope I maybe helped one or two of you out there who were maybe a little confused um, or maybe I helped some of you uh, make up your mind and decide for yourselves what you think the ending meant. Um, please let me know down in the comments if you agree, if you disagree, if I maybe missed something or I got the science wrong, which is highly likely. Um, yeah, let me know down below. Um, also, if you like this video, guys, please consider hitting that like button. Um, it really helps the channel. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.